Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Is there sound? Because StreamYard just kicked me off. No sound. Yes, you're back. Okay, sound is back. Yes. I'm sorry, StreamYard kicked me off. I don't know what is going on with StreamYard, but let me just shut the door here. Okay. So as everybody jumps on, um, I don't know what's going. Yes. Okay, good. You hear Chet. Perfect. Uh, StreamYard, for whatever reason, kicked me off. I will be emailing them about that because it seems there is always an issue with StreamYard, which I rebuke in Jesus' name. Yep. Yeah, they said they're having trouble streaming to Periscope right now. So who's on Periscope? I'm sorry. I just got a message from StreamYard saying they cannot um, stream to Periscope right now. Hi. So basically, um, this is what's going on. So I'm going to get the document back up and we'll continue as we should because uh, StreamYard just shouldn't be doing this. I'm sorry. But, you know. You have to pay for StreamYard, just so everybody knows. And so, really, their service should be better than this. But praise God, we're back, and um, we're going to continue. So, we talked about, in the first one, what ha uh, the prophecy from September 4th, 2019, how the Lord was putting an end to spiritual bandits. Those that have been operating in lawlessness for years, those who've been operating in secrecy, Numbers 32, 23, your sins will find you out, was going to happen. These bandits were going to be caught and cornered, and their dirty deeds and operations, uh, the way they've been siphoning, emptying, taking, stealing, robbing, in many regards on many platforms are going to be exposed. We have seen that uh, quite a few times in the past year and a half. The Lord exposed this and exposed down to the darkest depths, um, what's going on in some ministries. So just please pray for them and pray for their families. We'll try to keep Chet as quiet as possible. No, I cannot move Chet out of the room. Um, I've gotten mail with cards in it saying, please move Chet out of the room. And I can't move Chet out of the room because there's no place to move him. That's his home. So we will try to do what we need to do. Okay, good. So I'm glad everybody can see the sound. No, well, they're saying no sound on Facebook, but on YouTube, they can hear it. Okay, good. People on Periscope can hear me now too. StreamYard must be having an issue tonight. So we're just going to have to work with it, guys. I'm sorry. This is an issue on StreamYard's end, and we are going to have to work with it. So. They're saying there's no sound on YouTube. Is there sound on YouTube? Okay, thank you, Annie. Annie's one of our moderators. She said there is sound on YouTube. Okay. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lisa was texting me, telling me there was no sound there for a moment. Okay. Annie's saying there's sound on YouTube now. So we can continue. So everybody can hear me. We'll move forward. I'm telling you, it's an issue on StreamYard's end. So we're just going to have to work with it and pray in the name of Jesus that there are no more glitches in Jesus' name. So, okay. Perfect. I'm just going to wait a second so we can praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we talked about the one from September 4th, 2019. Now, this is interesting, too. There was a word I gave on from the Lord. It was February 10th, 2020. Okay. And that word basically was had to do with, if you remember Zerubbabel and S Ezra, it had to do with that. Everybody else has sound. Oh, oh, Karen is saying if you exit the app in YouTube and then come back in, you'll have sound. So um, I don't know what Dawn Marie and Lisa are doing, but they're saying still no sound, but then everybody else on YouTube is saying they have sound. So does everybody on YouTube have sound? Oh, 
Okay. Everyone on YouTube says, as long as you leave and come back in, you can hear. Okay? As long as you leave and come back in, you can hear. Now, February 10th, 2020, the Lord talks about this. He talks about, however, says the Lord thy God, as King Cyrus was operated through mightily by me to issue a decree that protected my people and put the builders to work, rebuilding my house of worship, rebuilding what is holy, rebuilding what had been bulldozed by pagan nations before them. So I, the Lord thy God, am giving the, bulldo the builders and the visionaries, the materials, the vision, the words, or prophecy, as I sent the prophets Haggai and Zechariah to encourage and speak into Zerubbabel, Ezra, and those who were with him building. So I, the Lord thy God, am doing the same, and I have raised those up, and I'm raising those up in the younger generation who will speak to a nation and bring those who once opposed me and my will is what he's saying. Everybody else is saying their sound. So, yes, there's a different link. We have a different link. StreamYard kicked me out. And so you have to go to the second live broadcast. So there is a second live broadcast. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to share the link. I'm going to share the link for the second live broadcast on Facebook, on Ark of Grace Ministries. So I'm going to go to Ark of Grace Ministries. And we're going to just put the link in. We're going to put the link in. Okay. New StreamYard link. I don't know. I can't. Okay. So I put the uh, the link back in. The new link. Good. Yeah, Chris keeps saying he can hear me. So people who are trying to, uh, you know, tell me there's no sound, they have to go back out and come back in. And it's, you know, I want to make sure I'm focused here. Uh, so what happened is I put a new link out with a new stream yard because the first stream yard was not working and stream yard kicked me off of it. So basically I just put the new link out on Facebook for you and YouTube. You should be able to hear me just fine. So everybody is saying they can hear clearly and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, you were on another channel. I know. I have two lives now because StreamYard literally kicked me off the first live. But what I can do is, so people aren't confused, this is what I will do before we get started here because I want to make sure nobody, okay. So which one, this one is the, okay. So this one, we're going to end. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to end this broadcast. Okay. Perfect. And now we only have this broadcast. So I just went in and I ended the first one. Yes, I just ended the first live. So I went back in and I ended the first live. And so now we have just one live going uh, to make sure I had to do this backup one because the first one kicked me off. So just so everybody knows we're straight. Okay, so basically, the Lord talked about February 10th, 2020, that he was bringing Haggai's and Zechariah's and those to encourage uh, to with the building process because they were rebuilding the house of the Lord, I believe, as they were rebuilding the wall, they were rebuilding, and so basically he sent... Uh, 
those to encourage those who were rebuilding. And so the Lord said he was going to do this, which is kind of what's happening now. And so he's going to, uh, in this word, which was February 10th, 2020, the Lord talks about to silencing those on the airwaves uh, well, before. So he talks about silencing those on the airwaves. Um, he says, there will be those this year before the elections that will suddenly be taken out and lose their positions. They have laughed at Almighty God and his plans for the last time. So he talks about this February 10th, 2020. This is happening with Zerubbabel and uh, Ezra. And they have people sent to encourage them, to encourage them in a very difficult time where there is a rebuilding process, where there is a lot of naysayers, where there's a lot of mockers, where there's a lot of people trying to sabotage what's being rebuilt. And so what happens is that Haggai and Zechariah are sent to keep encouraging the builders and speak the word of the Lord. And so we see that happening right now. This was February 10th, 2020. I just wanted to touch on this for a moment because I think it's important. And so I think we need to understand the Lord is going to send those now. And in the rebuilding process, there is going to be ones that want to sabotage, naysayers, um, those that try to sabotage, those that try to um, write letters as they did back then to stop things from continuing. However, the Lord has gave Haggai and Zechariah a certain anointing for this. And that is what we are seeing happening now. And we will see continue to happen through this. So I thought that was worth just touching on for a moment before we really get to uh, what happens. Because I will remind you that September 14th, 2020, the Lord said, there will be a major shift that happens right around Rosh Hashanah. Hold on, because we will be making a big turn, says the Lord God Elohim. Hold on to your father, for this is necessary. There shall be events that occur with the elements that will confirm this, and there shall be a major explosion. Okay, well... The major explosion was what happened in Nashville. Uh, that was one of them. But we know on Rosh Hashanah, the death of uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was announced. And then we entered a big turn. We did. That's exactly what happened, which leads us to some of these things having to do with the Supreme Court in the States. I will tell you something interesting that has come to pass. There are two things that are worth noting that have come to pass, okay? October 31st, 2020, the Lord said, and I, the Lord, am judging leadership in states that think they can wave Almighty God off. In 2021, Mr. Cuomo, the governor of New York, indeed will be issued a heavy blow for the indignant, smug, defiant, rebellious position he has taken against the holy, pleasing, acceptable things of Almighty God. He is in the middle of a major scandal right now that literally went like wildfire uh, just a couple weeks ago. This happened. So this is coming to pass right now um, as we speak. And, you know, we praise the Lord for that. And even December 20th, 2020, the Lord says an event in the capital of New York, Albany, that is going to set the tone, says the Lord of hosts, that event was this scandal because the governor basically governs out of the capital of New York, which is Albany. So the Lord reiterated it, uh, what was coming, and he said it would set the tone, which is interesting. Uh, so basically that happened. Also, February 7th, 2021, I gave a prophetic word from the Lord. He said that there would be an airline that suffered a major scandal. That's what he said. United Airlines, I think it's United, is had to ground all of their Boeing 777s because its engine caught fire and basically exploded in the air. So they had to ground all of the planes. So that was the airline that the Lord talked about 
February 7th, 2021. So we praise the Lord for accuracy for that. But it was just announced yesterday that this happened. So that came to pass. Before we, I just wanted to get into a few of these before we get into the Supreme Court, because I know this is what everybody's talking about right now. Now, I'm going to give you a few words from the Lord that were spoken in 2020 pertaining to the courts, because what the Lord said is happening right now. Okay. March 13th, 2020, I shall split them open and expose down to the hallows what they are doing, says the Lord, thy God this day. For I, the Lord, capitals, am changing the courts. I am changing the courts of events on this planet. I thought it would be course. It's not. It says courts. I am changing it in order to save souls and in order to excel my children in this hour. Um, so he talks about this and he says, there will be an acceleration of my children where man is shaking. People will see my children excel. There will be a clear line drawn in the sand and there will be a clear choice. Choose this day whom you will serve, says the Lord thy God this day. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose life. I have set before you this day, death and life. Choose life that your seed and your country may live. Cleave unto me, my children. Grab hold of my hand in this hour. Listen for me. Praise me like you never have. Let the praises shoot past the enemy's camp up into the heavens to reach my throne. For I, the Lord, that's capitals, thy God will be compelled to act as my children in this nation and as the president and the vice president and those in leadership humble themselves and come together and cry out to me. That was the key. As they humble themselves and cry out to me, I would be compelled to act. The vice president didn't humble himself and uh, the Lord behind the scenes is dealing with President Trump uh, right now. So basically that was in March. The Lord also says in this that there would be a supernatural course of events. Um, less and less people will refute it when they see it. There will always be scoffers and naysayers and mockers, but I, the Lord thy God, this day will ensure that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And this time is no different. It is crucial. The time is now like never before. I shall work things together for good for those who love God. Okay. So that was the beginning utterances of it. Okay. We're going to get into some really uh, clear words right now about it. So that was the beginning of the utterances. November is when it really begins. And November 17th, 2020, and says this, the Lord, uh, and says the Lord, my spirit is hitting the highest chord in the land, he said. Um, that's a good thing or a bad thing. Meaning his spirit may hit it to deal with them or his spirit may hit it to operate through them. Okay. Now, he also says, He would make it clear that this is far bigger than attempting to usurp an election. This is about rebellion, capital letters, being led against my law that's capitalized in this land that has been tarnished and mocked and smeared with the filth and venom that comes from that serpent of old, the devil. So he says this November 17th, 2020. December 28th, 2020 is when the Lord really warns what's going to happen to judges in 2021. And he says, and says the spirit of the Lord this day, you shall see Purim, a Purim like scenario begin this month and carry into early 2021, which could be the first half of the year, as there will be an escalation. This is the key here. There will be an escalation that shall bring forth and shall open the gates for a legal flood to begin to purge the courts of this land, for they are filthy with unholiness, bribes. Many of these supposed judges have emancipated themselves from the laws of the land, from the Constitution, and most importantly, the laws of Almighty God. And says the Lord of hosts, since there has been an emancipation and they have gone rogue, 
I, the Lord your God, shall cause them to fall. And carrying into 2021, you shall see many judges fall. Many is capitalized. And their cases shall be opened, and their hidden briefcases with the blood money of bribes, verdicts for hire, and a legal contract shall be exposed, as shame shall cover these courts, and they shall lose the trust of the people. However, says the Lord of hosts, there are those judges I have positioned to carry out justice, to do my will, to have the boldness and the courage of their conviction, to stand firm in the face of threats and intimidation, and I, the Lord thy God, shall drop the gavel, for my verdicts, my rulings have already come forth in the realm of the spirit and are being opened up. The sealed scrolls I, the Lord, sent forth through my holy angels. These scrolls are being unsealed and the judgments of men, leaders, facilitators, placators, and those serving the interests of the kingdom of darkness shall be carried out. I shall uphold the judges in this hour whose hearts have been searched and found worthy. You shall know them for I, the Lord, your God, am highlighting them in this hour and writing my word on their hearts and filling their spirits with the wisdom that goes forth from my capital letters throne, says the Lord of hosts. He goes on. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, what is impossible with man is possible with God. And I, the Lord thy God, have sent forth my angelic army to make a way where there seems to be no K-N-O-W way. They are clearing away a plan, a purpose that has come forth from my throne. Do not be afraid, my children. Do not, that's capitalized, feel all is lost. For you serve a mighty God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. I, the Lord, in this hour shall put on a demonstration in this hour, and you will see those switch sides that will be shocking. Uh, listen to this again. I, the Lord says he shall put on a demonstration in this hour, and you will see those switch sides. What's happening in the court? What's happening in the Supreme Court? You will see those switch sides that will be shocking. Both Republican and Democrats, both the elephant and the donkey, says the Lord of hosts. Okay. He's warning back in December, back in December, that there's going to be an escalation, which in a way happened today, that's going to bring forth and shall open the gates for a legal flood to begin to purge the courts of this land. What happened today? What is it doing? It's putting people's eyes on the Supreme Court where now they believe the Supreme Court is compromised. Okay? People are getting suspicious. This is the escalation. Now, and it says it'll open the gates for a legal flood to begin to purge the courts of this land. That's what the word says. Because they're filthy, the Lord says, with unholiness, bribes, and many of these supposed judges have emancipated themselves from the laws of the land and from the Constitution. So he's warning many have done this. Okay. And he said in 2021, you shall see many capitalized judges fall and their cases shall be opened and their hidden briefcases basically with everything they've done that is corrupt is going to be exposed. He says blood money of bribes, verdicts for hire, and illegal contracts. One or all three of them is at play in the Supreme Court. The Lord said shall be exposed. However, says the Lord, there are those judges I have positioned to carry out justice. So there are going to be those judges who rise up in the middle of this who are going to stand for justice, okay? In the middle of this exposure of all of these judges, which is happening right now. The Lord is also saying he put a ruling forth in the realm of the spirit and the scrolls are going to be unsealed and what is written on them is going to be carried out. So he says this, December 28th, 2020, that is important because it's happening right now. It's happening right now. He also said his spirit would hit the highest court in the land. That is also important because that could go either way. He, he also talks about writing his law on their hearts. There may be some of these judges that as things happen, which I'm about to talk about, you're going to see 
a change of heart, okay? Because really, this goes down to a heart and spiritual condition as much as it goes down to a corrupt condition, okay? So we, I want everybody to, I want everybody to understand that. Okay. Is every does that can people hear me on YouTube? Yes, the Lord started saying that last year that the whole system needs to be cleansed. He started saying that last year. Can, Chris, can you hear me? Okay, everyone's saying they can hear on YouTube. Perfect. Okay. All right, he's yelling yes. I hear you. Okay, so I think some people's YouTubes are acting up and this is the problem in the middle of this. Leave it to YouTube, seriously. Um, so let's get into now what's happening. What's really happening, okay? Because all I heard was that the ruling came down and they're refusing to hear cases. I didn't read, I didn't get into it because I can't, because I have to prophetically hear correctly. And if I get into all of that and go down that rabbit hole, it may influence what the Lord wants to tell me. So there are multiple capitals that are being blackmailed and threatened on the Supreme Court right now, including one of the newest appointees. Um, and if this is what they so choose to do with their power, they will have the Lord to contend with as well. Um, the blackmail will pale in comparison to contending with the Lord. I will tell you, the Lord thy God is going to shake the Supreme Court. He's going to shake it. And they shall begin to reconsider. I don't know when that would happen. Um, they're going to reconsider their head in the sand mentality on this. They, are, they think they're sitting pretty, but it's quite ugly and can be easily replaced by the Lord. The Lord can easily uh, begin to move pieces around that he wants moved. You, and this is what was written, peddlers of ignorance instead of upholding the Constitution and above all, fearing the laws of God. Because technically speaking, if there is any hearing about any election, it should be at least heard out by the Supreme Court because it has to do with the elections in the Constitution. And then it says, for a major player in the, quote, Republican Party has privately threatened these justices as well, whose heart has been dyed blue. And this shall come out in Jesus' name. For some gavels have been stolen, hijacked, and some who hold seats in the highest court in the land have become merely puppets with a handler telling them when to strike their gavel and when to pass. This too shall be exposed. There is a Saul within the Supreme Court who will become a Paul within the Supreme Court who will become a Paul. And this is also what was written. Special interests are running the Supreme Court. It is, it is severely tainted. The Supreme Court is like the house of Eli. Remember the house of Eli? The sons were corrupt. He knew it. He looked the other way. He let them continue what they were doing. He didn't say anything. As the house of Ahab, allowing Jezebel to ultimately decide what is just, right, and moral. That is what's happening, okay? They are allowing the most wicked and immoral to try to decide what is just, right, and moral, meaning influencing those judges. They know what the others are doing. So some of these judges know what the other judges are doing, and they are looking the other way. And I will tell you, the Lord, there are cases in the word of God happened with Elisha where the Lord allowed Elisha to hear what the king of Assyria was saying in his bedroom. So he could tip the king of Israel off and they could defend. Okay. I'm praying today and I'm in my room and I hear in my spirit and my mind, I'm hearing this. If we take this case, we will lose our families. I heard this. If we take this case, we will lose our families. So there, the lives of their families have been threatened. 
And so a good number of these cases, I'll say, are being denied because the lives of their families have been threatened. And this is why the cases are being just one after the other, denied and not heard. This will come out at some point. But I'm hearing this. As I'm praying and I'm in my room, I'm hearing this. And I wrote this down to talk about tonight. I'll also say that I was searching in the word of God, because we always have to take it back to the word. Where this happened, where this was spoken about, corruption in the judicial system or, or judges. Or Isaiah chapter 1, verses 21 through 26 says, how the faithful city has become a harlot. It was full of justice, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross, your wine mixed with water. Your princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and follows after rewards. They do not defend the fatherless, nor does the cause of the widow come before them. Verse 24, therefore the Lord says, the Lord of hosts, isn't that interesting? When uh, Isaiah is prophesying, the Lord of hosts is said, you know why the Lord of hosts is said? Because that's the plumb line and the dividing line between what Isaiah says and what the Lord says. Therefore, the Lord says, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, ah, I will rid myself of my adversaries and take vengeance on my enemies. I will turn my hand against you and thoroughly purge away your dross and take away all your alloy. I will restore your judges. I will restore, which means they have to be corrupt to be restored. I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness the faithful city. Glory to God. The Lord um, led me to this verse or this uh, group of verses in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter one, which perfectly describes what is happening now and what we are seeing happen now. And I will tell you this too, that I pulled this excerpt I believe because I pulled it really fast off the blog. It was a prophetic word from a few months ago, and I'll get the date for you. But this is what it says. There are judges, heads of state, heads of corporations, heads of pharmacia, heads of media, heads of military and legal justice branches, former presidents, spouses of former presidents, and heads of the UN all involved in this attempted blockade to rob the people, to rob those who have no idea they are being robbed, says the Lord, who are freely handing over their freedoms, thinking their freedoms will be safe and secure in the hands of a wicked council and their cardboard cutouts propped up in positions of leadership to be just that. However, says the Lord thy God this day, cardboard cutouts fold easily. They destroy easily, and the slightest wind knocks them over. That was a word from a few months ago, an excerpt from a word. First one out of the gate was judges. That should tell you a lot um, about what the Lord was warning about. I am going to tell you a few things, too, that I have been praying about. And these are going to be, one of these is going to be a little hard to say. But this is what I wrote down after praying. That Faith Advisory Council of President Trump's is one of the reasons this has been delayed. I talked about this last year, that the president was not being advised correctly. He was not being advised in faith correctly. He was being led down, we'll say, a somewhat reckless path to a degree. And the Lord was not going to allow a second term to go forth with this council intact. So basically, this council is not the whole reason, but a significant one that this second term has not gone forth yet. That council is corrupt. And that council would have led him right off a cliff, a spiritual cliff, had it been kept intact and they'd been puffed up in their pride with a second term. 
This is part of the reason we are seeing this happen. Um, because they advise to serve their own interests. So they were advising to serve their own interests, not putting God's will, plan, interests ahead of theirs. That's why Nathan was so, um, I don't want to say revered, but he was respected by David. Thank you, Lord. He was respected because David ensured the Lord's interests went ahead. Dave, uh, Nathan feared David. I mean, Nathan feared God more than he feared David. And that's how it should be. And it should be the Lord's interests go ahead. You're not constantly telling them what they want to hear. And this is a, a part of this because there were things being planted in the president that had a second term gone forth now would have blossomed and would have caused many stumbling blocks, okay? So I want to make sure that people know this. Also, I will say this deep steep uh, freeze in Texas and Oklahoma that happened, this historic freezing temperatures that happened, um, I was taken back to when a certain somebody with the first name Joe said it was going to be a dark winter. Said it was going to be a dark winter. I will tell you, there has been some sort of manipulation that's been going on. Those windmills were manipulated too. Those windmills were manipulated um, because... It's very hard for something constantly moving to freeze, even if the temperatures go down to negative two. Somehow, those windmills were manipulated. Now, I can tell you something. When Pastor Dave and I drove with Chris and his mom and his film crew from Ohio to Arizona, we went through that deep freeze. Okay. And by the way, if you're still in Texas and Oklahoma and need help, please email us at arc of grace for him at gmail.com and we will get you the resources that you need. And as we're driving through, I see the windmills during the day, which they're ominous looking. They're like giants. I mean, it's insane. But at night, at night, these windmills all flash red in unison. Tons of red going off in the darkness, flashing in unison. It's one of the most ominous looking things I have ever seen are those lights that go off on those windmills at night. Because we drove right through and we saw it. And dark winter, op, we're going to call it Operation Dark Winter because that's what it is. And this happening during the impeachment and leading up to this ruling on the Supreme Court, this deep freeze happening is no accident. It is no accident. Okay. I can tell you that it was no accident. And the timing of that is very um, suspect. It is very suspicious. And the fact that the windmills were in one way or another tampered with is suspect as well. So that dark winter and this happening, dark winter in the middle of the Supreme Court ruling, the impeachment, the freeze, there is a correlation. There is a, so start praying to the Lord to cancel the dark winter. Start petitioning the Lord at his throne to cancel and cut short and nullify the dark winter. Okay, that's one thing I'm going to ask you to pray. I will tell you that driving through and seeing it for yourself, we saw the snow in New Mexico. We saw it. These are historic events that are occurring. Historic events of weather. Um, historic events... Um, when it comes to um, the court, I find it no coincidence either that I find it no coincidence that this 
happened. This opinion by the Supreme Court happened three days before Purim. Purim is three days away. For those of you who don't know what Purim is, Purim is from the book of Esther. The Lord raised Esther up to be queen to a Persian king. Haman, who was birthed from the line of the Amalekites from Saul's disobedience, ends up becoming the working his way up to the right hand man of the king. Haman convinces the king to put out a decree to destroy the Jews. And they're set for destruction. And what happens is, is that Esther fasts and prays. Mordecai has sackcloth and ashes on. After they fast and pray for three days, because she's going to go before the king, which could get her killed. The king is merciful because he loves her. And she invites him and Haman, she invites the king and Haman to a dinner and then invites them to another dinner. And at that dinner, she exposes Haman and his plot to take the life of all the Jews, including herself. Because now she exposes she's a Jew. Haman had built that gallows to hang Mordecai that his wife and others egged him on to build. And then she said to him, turns around and says, if Mordecai be a Jew, you will not succeed. And Haman get, ends up, there's a divine reversal. That's what Purim is. There is a divine reversal of the plot. There is a divine reversal of the destruction. And the Jews end up being saved. And the decree that went out after that Mordecai and Esther wrote, because the king kind of took his signet ring off and went, go get him. Because now Mordecai is in the position of Haman. Now he's second in command to the king. And they put out a decree ratifying the Jews to fight anybody who comes after them. And they're allowed to take all take plunder from them. And so basically that is what happens. And the Jews end up because of the Lord causing a divine reversal. And I'm giving a very brief synopsis here. Triumphing over their enemies. Actually, I am going to teach on Purim again this year. Because there is so much to Purim. I have the teaching that I had put together last year. I'm going to teach on it again this year because it's that important this year. It is that important to what is happening. So I am going to do uh, I am going to do Purim again because basically I think this year Purim is so I don't want to say historic, but I want to say it's very um significant. It's integral. The time between Purim and Passover, I think is going to be explosive this year. Very explosive. I had heard April audibly when I was writing one of the words out from the Lord uh, a couple weeks ago or so. So I'm watching April. So Purim, I am going to teach on because Purim is crucial this year. And I find it no coincidence that this came out three days before Purim. Chris actually dressed up as King Xerxes last year, or King Ahasuerus, and he came in with the golden scepter. So um, I may have to get him another uh, Purim outfit. So <laughs> in order to do this teaching, because we did this last year, and I think it is worth teaching it again this year, because there is so much within that Purim story. There is so, you're just scratching the surface, just reading it. There is so much depth and substance to it. And we are in a Purim-like scenario right now. Meaning, God's people um, are getting door after door, or the country, believers, the remnant, it appears are getting door after door closed on them when it comes to the legalities, okay, and the presidency, and the which means, just like in Purim, the Lord wants to do it. The Lord wants to save. The Lord wants to make a way. The Lord wants to have the ruling. The Lord wants everybody looking at him. Don't put your faith in man. Put your faith in Almighty God. Truly. Don't put your faith in man. Put your faith in Almighty God. 
We are merely servants of the Most High God. That's why you don't see um, the word prophet written anywhere in the title. Anywhere, you know, because if other people say that, that's on them about me. But I am a woman of God and a servant of the Most High God. And that's how I see myself. And so we have to understand that as humble servants right now, we need to be bombarding the heavens and petitioning the throne of God constantly to intervene in this nation and humble ourselves and repent for going against God's laws, for going against God's ways, for allowing such perversion and filth to trickle across the country and blank blanket it in a film, in a film of sin. And we need to repent of that. And we need to cry out to God for it. Because when the Lord does something, it's unprecedented. When, the, when you see in the word of God, time and time again, with Gideon, with Jericho, with so many other instances, Joseph, um, Moses, when the Lord did it, it was unprecedented. Those 10 plagues of Egypt were unprecedented. Gideon, with 300 men defeating an army of 147,000, was unprecedented. Joseph, a Hebrew, being raised up to be second in command to Pharaoh, was unprecedented. So we have to understand, when the Lord does something, it is unprecedented. In Deborah becoming a, a judge in Israel, unprecedented. Jericho, the walls just falling flat, unprecedented. So when the Lord does it, the Red Sea parting, unprecedented. And I will tell you this about prophecy. There's short-term prophecy and there's long-term prophecy. And people that want to jump jump on the false prophet bandwagon, I'll tell you this. Jesus said he was coming again soon and he still hasn't come. Does that mean it's false? Or does that mean it is a long-term prophecy? John the Revelator saw things that are in the book of Revelation that we still haven't seen come to pass yet. Does that mean John was a false prophet? Because there are prophecies that take a lot of time to unfold. There are short-term prophecies and there are long-term prophecies. Okay, so when Jesus says he's coming again soon. Oh my gosh, look what I did. You see what I did? When Jesus says he's coming again soon. And that we're still waiting, right? Does that mean it's false? Or does that mean there's a timetable? Does that mean God has a set time and a set timetable to deliver what he has ruled to deliver in the time he has ruled to deliver it? You see, we see in part and we speak in part. OK, so when we see in part, we can only speak the part that we see. But there may be three other parts to that that go together. To bring it to pass. So we see in part and we speak in part. And I'm going to tell you this. Be careful about every and all rabbit holes you chase of military intelligence. Because there is a ton of disinformation out there right now. There is a ton of people sharing information in military intel that's not really military intel. That's like playing telephone. That's second and third hand information. That's not correct. Be careful and discern. Be careful what you listen to. Don't chase every rabbit hole. Don't blow with every wind of doctrine right now. The Lord has the best intelligence agency there is in heaven. The Lord knows it all. He knows everything. We know nothing. He's almighty and all powerful. We're fallen. And we need him through Jesus Christ in order to be reconciled to him. And the Lord wants to speak to his people. The problem is the people of God have not made the time for him. And this is another part why we're seeing the delay, because there is a big part of the church that is completely corroded. OK, you have shepherds that aren't real shepherds. You have shepherds that are breeding hostility and name calling and so filled with anger because of losses and soul wounds in their own lives that they never wanted to deal with. So they want to take it out on a person they target. And you've got people playing shepherds doing that. Now, I'll tell you, the word of God says, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. It didn't say beware of shepherds 
in wolves clothing okay or wolves in shepherds clothing it said beware of wolves in sheep's clothing it means it's the person next to you you got to look out more for what they're going to do than the shepherd that's what that means beware of wolves in sheep's clothing it's interesting pastor ricky ray was talking to me about that beware of wolves in sheep's clothing not beware of wolves in shepherd's clothing okay there are double agents in the church the lord back in july i had prophesied he was pulling the curtain back on the wizard of oz type operation going on in the church part of the church has completely fallen away part of them have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof part of them um are yelling about this whole president trump thing when this is much bigger than president trump and uh this is about god and gutting and exposing everything down to the deepest depths. Um, there are some that are clinging to the horns of the altar, trying to save what they have built, who have done a complete 180, and are deciding to um, jump on a, an apple cart of, of attacking that's going to be upset. That apple cart will be upset. This is why you have to stay steadfast in the word of God and in your faith and knowing what God told you. Because many times going with what God told you is the harder road. The easy thing right now would be to give up and to shy away. Most, most of the time when the Lord gives it to you and you're standing your ground or you're, it's the harder road to take. Okay. The way is narrow because people want to see it to believe it we live in that society self-gratification to see it right away is to believe it the churches even teach this now they sound like motivational speakers most of them more than shepherds because what do shepherds do they have to keep the sheep in line okay shepherds don't make the sheep let's put it this way feel good all the time and let the sheep run amok and do whatever they want shepherds are there to maintain law and order spiritual law and spiritual order and instead you're hearing things like social justice and you're hearing all these other things be spit out and be run amok with and um you know liberalism just completely invading the church and tainting it and corroding it and now the church is diseased and you've got people that won't even acknowledge that the church is diseased and that some of their friends who are doing Lord of the Rings ceremonies in their churches might have gone a bit wayward down a path they weren't supposed to take. This is why it's important to have a spiritual advisor truly with your church, because as a church grows, pride sets in notoriety sets in temptation sets in so as a church grows those things set in more and more and you need somebody there to kind of speak the truth of god and speak to the pastor and say no you shouldn't be going in this direction or yes you should be going in this direction you need and, and many churches lack that Many churches lack that accountability, and that is part of the problem. My pastors watch, Pastor Wade and Mary Ann Berry, they watch. They watch what I say. They make sure I'm doctrinally sound. They actually have a Bible college, and they're very good in theology and teaching the word. And so they watch what I say, and I will tell you that you've got a fracture in the church right now. You've got the part of it that's completely diseased. And then you've got the remnant that is really strong in the Lord. And praise God, the remnant is in this land because that's one of the reasons the Lord is going to spare it. So praise God for that. But there's a fracturing right now. And there's a very diseased part that has to be dealt with. And we have to make sure that the Lord is first. We cannot make man an idol. We cannot set a leader up as an idol. You cannot set a shepherd or a prophetic ambassador or whoever else up as an idol. Okay? Because they are so far beneath God. When it comes to his holiness, it's not even funny. So we are so far beneath God 
We are like filthy rags in his sight. You know what I mean? Meaning like, yes, he sees us through the blood of Jesus and he sees we're washed and we're cleansed. But truly, we are like filthy rags in his sight. Meaning we are so fallen as man and he is so holy. Praise God for the blood of Jesus and that we can come to him through Jesus Christ. But we have to understand that we are so far beneath him and we cannot put anybody on so high a pedestal that we are worshiping them. Okay, this is part of the problem here. And I'm going to tell you that the Lord is going to deal with that with what happened with President Trump. He is going behind the scenes. He's dealing with uh, President Trump. He's dealing with him. He is dealing with a lot of things in his soul that the Faith Advisory Council never wanted to call out and deal with. That's why I kept saying the president needs a Nathan. The president needs a Nathan because you need somebody that will call a spade a spade and call it out and say, this is in your soul. This is a root for the enemy. This has to come out. You got to stop this. You need somebody there to do that. So basically, they didn't do that. And I know towards the end, he may have, I don't know, stopped listening to them, or I don't know if he dismissed them. I don't know what happened. But I'm just saying that you need somebody to do that with a leader. You need somebody that's willing to call that out. You need somebody that's willing to say, your pride and fear is getting ahead of you on this, is getting ahead of you uh, when it comes to certain, we'll say, shots, the V word. It's getting ahead of you. Your fear is getting ahead of you. You need to stop and get on your knees and pray. You know, you need people that are bold enough to say that. And so this was a, a significant part of the problem that the Lord is dealing with right now behind the scenes, okay? There is a lot of cleaning out the Lord's going to do of that man's spirit and soul right now. A lot. So just keep praying. And I will tell you that I know what I saw in that dream. And I know who I saw sick in bed. And I will discuss that even further when I watch events unfold. But I'm going to tell you that... The Lord said it was going to be a fight over the next year to begin to get the country back. The Lord had said this in a word I delivered from him. It was going to be a fight. So we have to understand that if the Lord says it was going to be a fight over the next year, it's going to be a fight over the next year. And so this is, we've got to buckle down in our faith, buckle down in the word, seriously seek the Lord, seriously pray, Call out to him right now. Seriously cry out to him in all humility because it is the Lord thy God that is going to answer this. It's the Lord thy God that ultimately is going to come to the answer of this. It's the Lord thy God that's ultimately going to deal with what is happening in this country. And he's raising up the fiercest men and women in the bold to do this. He is raising them up in such fierceness and boldness in the Lord to speak truth that is cutting like a two-edged sword in an hour of lies and corruption and propaganda that is growing at like weeds and thorns and brambles and briars. And you've got that truth cutting right through it. And that truth is going to cut even more and cut even deeper. It's going to cut even deeper. It's going to cut even deeper down to the blood. So we are going to watch for this as it occurs. But I'm going to tell you that there is going to be a shaking of the entire judicial system in this land, and it has already begun. And praise the Lord, he talked to me about that last year and warned me that was coming. Because there are some on the Supreme Court who are petrified right now to take these cases because of how they have been threatened. OK, you've got masters and and grandmasters and heads of corporations and heads of the government that are all issuing threats right now. All of them. You've got those who have secretly sold out right now in Congress that are acting behind the scenes. They have they're It's like they're two faced. They have one face in public and then they've got a really dark face in private. So this is all by the Lord 
has to allow it for it to be exposed. He has to allow all of this to come out the way it is. Because if he didn't allow all of this, nobody would see it. Nobody would see the corruption. Nobody would see the tampering. Nobody would see the judicial corruption. Nobody would see uh, the corruption when it comes to certain uh, laws. Nobody would have seen it. So the Lord allowing this, he, the Lord thy God is making a case to this country right now is what he is doing. He is making a case. He is laying it bare. He is showing the American people what is really going on and saying, choose this day whom you will serve. That is what he's doing. He's laying this whole case out. And let me tell you something. His fist is going to smack down and shake and crush some areas that are going to leave the wicked trembling because their God isn't going to be able to help them. Because their God is so far beneath Almighty God. And so this is going to happen in the midst of this. There is going to be such shaking in the midst of this as this case is laid out by the Lord to show the American people this is your foundation. This is the corrosion. This is the corruption. This is the ungodliness. This is, it's like Sodom. But you have more than 10 righteous in this country right now who are crying out to the Lord and who serve him. Just like the Lord said to Elijah, there were thousands who had not bowed their knee to Baal. Thousands who didn't bow. You've got more than thousands in this country who have not bowed their knee to Baal. And those are the thousands and the, and the hundreds of thousands and the millions that can make a difference right now in the realm of the spirit before the throne of God. And this is what we have to remember right now. This is what we have to remember. I am going to go back to that word from February 7th and I'm going to look it over because there is a lot in that word, okay, that is set to unfold. And so as I'm seeking the Lord, I'm going to look that back over because I think it's important and I think it's worth um, discussing again because that word, that February 7th word was very powerful, very powerful. Praise the Lord. Praise almighty God. So I'm going to look it back over and I'm going to pull pieces from it to discuss next time I come on. I also want to teach about Purim and I want to talk about Malachi because Malachi has a lot to do with what's going on now too. So I want to teach on um, the book of Malachi because um, Malachi had this Jacob and Esau thing going on in his time. One was favored by God, the other was not. And so I'm going to talk about that as well. So basically, I'm going to pray about what order to do this in and how to do this as I continue to seek the Lord and talk with him and write down what he gives me. So in the middle of all of this, we're going to do these teachings and we're going to talk about that February 7th word again. And so that's what I wanted to end with. That's what I wanted to end with. You know what I say all the time when I pray before I come on? I pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And that's what I pray. I usually do it after I take communion. So all of us should be praying that right now. David was very wise to pray that. So, and pray for those that are involved in this. Um, you know, those that are fighting right now um, for truth, pray for them. Pray for all of them right now because they need it. So to God be the glory. That's what I'm going to end with. Keep the faith. And uh, I will be back on in a few days. I believe it's Wednesday. I'll tell you what the uh, events are for this week. The events are for this week that on Wednesday at 2 p.m. I'm going to be on Kirsten W.'s channel ministering uh, to, uh, to those who watch her.
And then 2 p.m. on Friday, Grace and Glory uh, will be on, on uh, His Glory. And then I will play it Sunday evening is what I will do. So that is what's on the agenda for the week. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm not sick. I'm just fighting a bit of allergies. So just pray for my nose. I'm sorry. I know it's getting a little bit stuffy towards the end. But just pray for my nose and um, stop, drop, and pray. Good slogan. And cry out to the Lord. You know, people need to be on their face before the Lord more. You need to be in that humbling position on your face before the Lord. Um, I do that a lot because I want to be in the right uh, position. I want to be in the right position submission before the Lord when I'm praying. So I do that a lot. Just, just a closing thought. So God bless everybody. Keep the faith and I will see you in a couple of days to God be all the glory. He is the King of Kings. He is the righteous judge and he is going to lead us in all wisdom and counsel in this in Jesus name. Have a wonderful rest of your evening.